South Africa's skill shortages uh, in critical sectors remain an obstacle to economic growth. Some analysts are suggesting the country follows the international example of importing skills until you develop your own. Marissa Jacobs, uh, Head of Immigration and Mobility at Expat Web, joins us now to discuss that. Thank you so much, Marissa, for your time. Uh, today, you've done a study. Do we know what these critical skills are that we're short of? Yes, uh, so the Department of Home Affairs in conjunction with Department of Labour, Department of Higher Education and Services CETA, they all come together to, to look at what the skills shortages are in South Africa and then they publish a list. So the last one was published in 2014, there's roughly 200 occupations listed on there in different sectors uh, which includes engineering, ICT, health, etc. And I understand that list hasn't really changed since 2014, what does that tell us? Not yet, but I understand that they are looking at it at the moment and, and updating it, yeah. What does industry itself say about what it is that they need? So, in the survey that we did where, where uh, a number of companies participated, they, the top occupations that came up is engineering and ICT, definitely. Um, senior management, so your typical C-suite uh, uh, guys, including um, obviously financial sector, uh, but those were the top ones. Okay, let's talk about the process then of bringing in um, expats, people who want to come in and, and fill in the, these gaps. Is that process difficult? Why is it that it's difficult to fill mm -hmm. these posts with, um, with immigrants, for example? Good. So the Immigration Act provides for, for, for bringing in people under Section 19 of the Act. So there's several categories of work visa, uh, mainly three. So intracompany transfers, so those are used by big multinational firms who want to transfer skill from a foreign office to a local office and that usually goes hand in hand with a skills transfer plan. Then secondly is the critical skills list. Uh, so if a company is looking for a skill that's on that list, they can bring someone in uh, based on that and then they must prove that the person has the qualification, that they have the experience around this and they usually also ask that they register with a local professional body so that they can validate that this person has this skill. Okay. And then finally is the general work visa. So if, if they're not provided for in one of those two categories, then they have to go through the Department of Labor to say, we've searched far and wide, we couldn't find a local skill and now we need to import that skill. Okay, and that was my, my next question. How, uh, um, how important is it for them to prove that they couldn't find someone here mm. um, to fill a particular position and mm. is there a procedure for that? Of course, yes. So vital. So they, don't, they can't get, unless it's on the critical skills list where there's been a predetermination that that skill is a shortage, they then have to prove um, to the Department of Labour through, they have to have a, a placed an advert in a national newspaper, they have to have vetted um, a, and received CVs, interviewed those candidates and proved that they couldn't find someone suitable and only then will the Department of Labour issue a certificate to say yes, we agree, this skill doesn't exist in South Africa and yes, you may bring them in. Okay, mm -hmm. so why is it then that we have a shortage if we've got a procedure and a process that people can follow to bring in immigrant mm. skills? Uh, I, I, I guess lots of companies are afraid of, of bringing in, in people from abroad. Uh, the, the process seems very daunting and, and they are reluctant to take it on. But it's, it's, it's not as scary a beast as it might seem. Okay, let's talk about the skills transfer because I imagine sure. that that's a massive um, part mm. of any strategy. If somebody's of going course. to do this, then they have to ensure that there is a level of, of transfer. Mm -hmm. um, how do they normally do it? So if they bring someone in on an intra-company transfer, at the application process, the department will ask them to draw up a skills transfer plan and present that with the application. And, and depending on where they're submitting the application, it, the, 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 the embassy will go as far as to ask, have you identified a person who you are transferring the skill to? Mm. Can we see their employment contract? And you have to detail in that skills transfer plan exactly what skills this foreign national has and, and, and which of those skills are you go is he going to transfer. Would you say that, that our immigration system is, is flexible when it comes to particularly this particular issue? Mm. I, I wouldn't use the word flexible to describe <laughs> our immigration system. Yeah. No, I don't think it's very flexible, but I think that's why there is regular uh, changes in the Immigration Act and regular review of these uh, critical skills lists so that it can adapt uh, to the changes in the market. All right. We'll leave it there. Thanks for your time. Today, Marissa Jacobs is Head of Immigration and Mobility at Expat Web.